we um, we were having one of these beautiful evenings, me and my two daughters, five and seven. My wife was on a business trip and we were home alone. Um, we had a, their favorite pasta dish to eat. They were happy. They spoke about everything fun that happened at work, or sorry, at school. And after that, we prepared for bed. We brushed our teeth and so on. And then we went on and watched um, the Swedish version of Talent UK. And we were really happy. We were sitting cuddled up in our um, in the sofa watching. And we were sort of crying and misty-eyed when we watched this unexpected genius coming up on stage and doing a really beautiful performance. And then we were laughing together when we saw someone clearly without talent getting through the rehearsal or uh, the selection and still getting on stage and, and not doing anything good at all. We were sitting there. Um, it was almost eight o'clock. It was time to turn off the TV. And then it started falling apart. The, the kids were angry. They were tired. They were really just wanted to lie down in the sofa. They didn't want to go to bed, despite they promised they would go to bed directly after we watched the show, but they didn't. So then you could just imagine how the rest of the evening would, would unfold. They would get first angry at each other, then would get angry at me, and then eventually they would get to bed and they would scream, they would not get into sleep, and so and so and so. And an hour later, I was sitting at my desk in the kitchen. Everything had calmed down, they were quiet presumably asleep. And from having this beautiful evening to having actually a ruined evening where I felt like a terrible father, a horrible uh, parent, I've obviously used the threats. If you don't go to bed now, then blah, 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 there will be no iPad tomorrow and so on. I know I'm not supposed to, but I had in the moment. So eventually, going back to change management, this is actually sometimes what happens. You talk about what you're going to do, everything, everyone is on board, everything seems fine, and then you start and the pain starts to come up. And then all of a sudden, they're not on board anymore. And this is something that, you ex that I experienced several times, not just as a father, but also in the company Vestrafik, where I worked. You think people are on board, but really not. They are on board as long as they can continue to do whatever they have been doing forever. Vestrafik, it's a bit like SL for those of you not familiar with, with it. We think it's more fun. We have trams instead of subways uh, or underground. And um, we are a bit smaller, so yes, we have a complex around that. Um, my role at Vestrafik has been basically to lead the digital transformation for about the last five years. Um, the last two years as a CIO or IT development manager. I'm going to go through the things we did uh, at Vestrafik using just some kind of model, these uh, six steps. So I'll talk you through them as we go. Looking at the first one, customer experience. That's usually a good place to start when you want to digitize a company. You want to, you want to do something that's fairly easy. You want to do something that has a visible effect. And when you want to do something or you want to do it in an area where it's not intertwined with so many different things. So customer experience is usually sort of the, the last end. You can redesign a website, you can make an app and so on. It's fairly straightforward compared to everything else you can do. And that's also what we did. Um, our first step was to launch um, an app for buying uh, tickets, both period tickets and uh, daily tickets. Um, it was a small step for mankind, I have to admit that, but it was a fairly huge step for Vestrafik. It was the first time in, yeah, forever that we've done anything but just procure and buy big systems and install them as according to a specification. This time we brought in a lot of developers, we brought in new, new talent and, and new employees to arrange and work with this so we can actually build a capability instead of just getting a system that will slowly decrease in value as the time go by. The next thing we did, oh sorry, just coming back to the other one. What we also did is we did the same thing with the web. That's why that, that's on the slide as well. So we started to feel good about this. It was actually quite a big success. Two projects on time, on budget, for the first time ever, basically producing value. The next time thing we did is um, set up a data analytics team. Um, you would think that's a straightforward thing. Of course, we should have data analytics. It's good to have data so we can take better decisions. But as probably you know, data is knowledge, data is power, and those who had the power 
we're not entirely eager to sort of, yeah, let's just distribute everything I know so everyone can do it. There's, there's a tension there. So in order to get around that, we did establish a team, and this seemed to be one of the, the key success factors in everything we did that succeeded, was establish a good team with the capabilities that you need. Not just technical, but also the, the, the soft, the, the, um, the human side of, of making some changes. Because new teams are like a small new kid in the back of the car. It will take space. We built capability to work with the data that is set up a platform, not just do one more thing, but set up a platform that we can use for on and on and on, so we can get better and better at doing this um, accessing data. We made it accessible through reports, so you didn't have to go and ask someone f to produce an Excel sheet, and then three days later you got the Excel sheet, and then it wasn't what you wanted, so you got back, and all of a sudden it takes you three weeks to get the numbers you wanted. This way you had them right away. It's quite obvious, but it's a new thing. And <laughs> one of the things, we actually spent a lot of time on what's hearts and minds. So you need to talk to the others so that they can feel secure with that we are taking care of their data, we're not doing strange things with it, they can trust us, and we're not um, stealing their job, we're just making it simpl simpler. We focused on the highest potential. Um, Nine billion Swedish crowns is what the cost of the traffic is in Västra Götalandsregionen. There are potential there. And <laughs> It, it sounds also obvious, but I don't know how many of you are from public sector. Usually we do a lot of things too much. We do everything at the same time, which means that almost nothing gets done. So one of the key things is focus on just one thing at a time. The other thing, technology integration. Um, this is the Swedish National Audit. Um, it's been in the newspapers uh, the last few weeks um, because most of the authorities in Sweden uh, I think about 60 or 70 percent are not doing what they should with their systems. They have two old systems, they're not supporting the organization and what they're trying to do. This is the same thing in, in a lot of different places and it's not a... We don't have problems with people not doing what they should. We have a problem with a systematic thing that... The system makes the wrong people assign tasks to the wrong people to do the wrong thing, basically. So it's really tough to get around this. So you do these short things. I, my daughter plays Heyday. I don't know if you, any of you play it. It's a, it's a game where you are a farmer and you do stuff. And she wants to use the precious diamonds. You get a few in the beginning. She wants to use the precious diamonds to just hurry up the crops. So you get, okay, let's get wheat li a, bit, a little bit faster. And, and instead of building, using the, the diamonds to build new factories or new buildings, so you can produce more eventually. And this is the same thing, short-term versus long-term thinking. And it, it's really important. Albert Einstein is supposed to have said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. It's also called following the process. And, and this is quite important because we usually, public sector, they procure systems. So you, have, um, you make a list and then you buy it from someone and they install it and they sort of develop it according to the specification. The problem is that it had never worked, but still there was a huge resistance to doing it in a new way, because this is what we are a, a company that do it this way. It doesn't work, but we do it this way. So it's easy to sort of um, be ironic about this, but how could it be that? But the structure is set up that this is, this is the right way to do it. And this is the um, chief architect in, in Vestrafik, and I think he put it in, in a really good way that functionality can grow org organically, that's what we want. The customers have opinions and we adjust it accordingly. But architecture needs a plan, and that's one of the th key things. If you look at a lot of public uh, companies, and probably private as well, they don't really have a plan with architecture. It's, it's really creative people that are doing stuff, but it's not coming together, which means that every new thing you do takes longer and longer and longer. It takes more and more cost. The idea should be, it has to be the other way around. You know you have a good architecture when everything goes faster and faster and faster and costs less and less and less to maintain. People and operations. This is probably the area where we spend most of our time. Um, Vestrafik has a, a strange setup where 
about two or three different entities set the rules and they all by themselves set a bit too many rules. So in the end you have, or rules, sorry, uh, goals. In the end you have a really huge amount of goals. So basically, you, which is good for, for management because you can decide what goals to follow. But it's also a problem if you don't do that cho choice. If you let the organization choose which one is my favorite goals. Because then you end up doing too much thing. This guy is probably trying to move a, a bit too many things at once. And nothing really gets done. One way to get around this was that we, again, created teams. So they were responsible before everyone was working on their own. Being part of, or being part of several different projects at the time. Moving around between different meetings, having to swap between different uh, thoughts all the time. Which took a lot of time. We established a service design center for excellence, which was really great, actually the biggest cultural shift I saw in during my five years, um, where you started asking the customers what they really want, what they needed. Um, our agile coaches helped us with big room coordination. So you just could have people sitting in the same room talking about the same thing. You have no idea how often it could be that people sat in rooms in, across each other in the corridor and talked about each other all the time. And, they had never met, we, we found out. We had a meeting and then, hi, I'm, I'm Lars, or I'm, I'm Kent, or whatever. Ah, so you haven't met, You'd said, you've talked about each other for two years, but you haven't met. And it's not that they are not or bad, but the system was not set up for them to cooperate. So you need to create opportunities to cooperate. We started having visible backlogs, which made it obvious to anyone that you can't all of, do all of these things. But again, it's also, but I have to do, yeah, but you can't. It's quite easy. And we have, again, really good support. Ola Berg here, who's here, I don't know if, I saw Jesper the other way, the, uh, in the other comp um, presentation as well. So we had a few different coaches that was really good to just get things started. But this was, this was fairly easy on a local level, but fairly hard on the global level in the company. One thing we did, managed to do was set up so instead of each department working by their own, themselves which is we, we've heard that throughout the day i mean you can't take global decisions locally without the people that needs to be involved being involved so anyway to, or the way to do that in some way is to find out what are your value streams and how can we make sure that we take decisions according to those value streams what we found in, in a few different ways was that these are the four things that uh, Vestrafik does. We provide traffic or a, a mean to, to travel. We have customer information. We have information about the customer, but also information to the customer. We sell tickets and we provide a way to, to um, manage that ticket. And then we support these three operations in some way. Um, the challenge for us was that Okay, so this is a good system, but it's completely different from the normal hierarchical way of running everything. And that is a big, big, uh, it's a big, it's, it's hard to make that step in small, in small steps or make that leap in small steps because either you work this or you work in a different way. You can take out one portion at a time, but you can't do a bit of both because then you have two um, steering wheels, as you usually call it, and that's usually not a good thing that doesn't increase uh, the mobility. Digital literacy, um, it's, it's generally low. I mean, if you look at this conference and talk to all people here, it seems obvious that this is how we should do it and ob obviously this is a good way forward. Most people are not there. Most people are in, okay, they hear about this maybe, they hear the talk about AI and the self-driving cars and what have you. That's, that's in the future. Today I'm sitting here and doing my normal job. What we found is that doing courses and having inspirational speakers is not that useful, to be honest. And, and the problem with that is that it, it tends to be, you listen to it and it's probably interesting, but looking to it, it's, you can always say, well, that's what I'm already doing. So the thing that we found most important is that you actually do on the job training. That makes a huge difference because then, then you see, no, that's not how you're doing it today. 
And this is how we need to talk about it and, and work through it. Governance and leadership. Um, for, for good reasons, public sector is set up not to make mistakes. Because you want the continuity, you don't want to waste tax money and so on. So there's a good reason why the structure is the way it is. The problem is, though, that in, in, in the quest to minimize mistakes, you end up minimizing value, usually. And sure, you don't get in the paper for minimizing value, which is a problem. You do get in the paper for making a mistake or making a public one. And if, if, that, if, if you are affecting 10,000 people, if the subway is not working, a lot of people will be screaming. So, so your, your mindset goes into not making mistakes. And that is a mistake. And so, okay, so how do we create this sense of urgency in the public sector? You need to do something. This statement is, goes out really well. I mean, if not now, when? Well, if you ask someone in public sector, they will say, how about next week or next year? There is no real time pressure. If you don't do it now, you can always do it later. The, the board or the politicians are sometimes eager to get one thing done, but it's not digital transformation. They want something specific. And this is, this is okay, so what do you do? You need, actually, you need to dig deeper, and this is one of the things that we didn't do properly. They are doing it now more, but at the moment we could have done it definitely more. It's digging into what are the personal drivers for the, the senior management team, and what can we use to actually get the sense of urgency, because that is key. If we don't have that, this is something I like to be a bit provocative about, but it's actually really important. If everything seems under control, you're not going fast enough. And, and the thing is not to drive recklessly. The thing is you need to have speed in order to see what part of your process can't handle that you move more quickly. So in, in order to do that, you need to try and be a bit quicker than you are today. Otherwise, you will never get out of the status quo. And this, of course, is uncomfortable because you will make mistakes. So in conclusion, just really quickly, these are the two things that I think, personally, that we handled really well. Um, technology integration, we had set up a good system where we don't procure systems anymore. We build capabilities to, to work with them. Data analytics worked great. We have beautiful reports and we actually work together with those um, doing the work out, planning the traffic also. It can be improved, but it, it's a good start. Customer experience worked really great, but it sort of got stuck after a while when it affected a bigger part of the company. Digital literacy, we made some progress, but it was a bit... It, it's a bit patchy. Some places it went really well, and some places we almost went nowhere. So all in all, it, it's yellow, it's not green. And the places where, where we should have done much more, and, and looking back, what, what I should have focused more on is people operations and governance and leadership. We did a lot of things here, trying to get operations and the process in place, but they were hampered by a lack of having the right values in, in the leadership team and the governance of the company. So it's easy here to say, well, we did everything right, but somehow we lost. We didn't lose. We've done a lot of good things, and it's a good journey. I'm, I'm not working for Best Traffic anymore, but it's, it's, uh, it's on a good path. But looking back, so what, what could I have done differently? And when, when I look at my time at Vestrafik, I see that I had a few assumptions that probably were not that helpful. Um, I assumed everybody liked improvements. That's great, you have a problem, let's solve it. That's, that's not entirely wrong. It's entirely right. I also assumed that everyone was, if they complain about something, well then, let's solve it. But that's not either exactly right. Sometimes it is, and if you provide the right circumstances, definitely. But given the, the circumstances at the moment, that's not maybe right. Understand IT development. The, the, the general knowledge is, is really low when it comes to IT, not just with our customers, but also within the company. Learn to see that everyone don't see what I see. Uh, we have different views, and, and I see my view. Um, understand what Agile really is. Some people say, well, Agile is great, but it's not really for us. Obviously, they're wrong. But how do you tell them that in a good way? And how do you talk about that without using Agile, digital transformation, and all of the other sort of 
cool words to be used. Just because I think someone feel included doesn't mean they do. So how can we find a good way to feel if they actually do feel included or understand if they do? This is a huge thing. When we're trying to do a more global, um, have a more global view of things, how do we teach system thinking? How do we talk about system thinking? And and lastly, which is quite important for me, don't I need to understand that my assumptions about other people might not always be right so I need to be more questioning about those coming back to the story from the beginning um, when I sat there in the kitchen feeling like the horrible father and and uh, sort of failed evening I was angry with myself I was angry with my kids for ruining the evening for me I was angry for me for feeling that way all of a sudden I hear some steps in 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 the stairway and my oldest daughter comes down and she just walks up to me, doesn't say a word, and just give me a really long, hard uh, hug. And all of a sudden, I just shift, shifted. Because all of a sudden it felt, well, maybe it's not that bad after all. So she said, I'm sorry, I said, I'm sorry, and we were really happy, and we both went to bed at the same time, and the evening was great. And I think the, the big lesson here is what, what I've taken from, from that experience is that if you start to move along really more quickly, you will make mistakes. You will behave in a way that you're not happy with. If you, say, if you create an environment and be able to say, I'm sorry, and accept an apology, then it will be fine. But this is the key thing. All of the other things are just tools that you use to become the person that you need to be. Thank you very much.